There's nothing more inspiring than hearing real people overcome real challenges to get the results they want, especially when those are the same results you'd like to see in your own life. That's why in this bonus episode, we are going deep with another amazing woman named Paulette Benson, who's actually been there and who has had incredible success after, like so many of us, failing at one diet after another. Welcome to the Feel Better Live Free podcast brought to you by Thinlicious. I'm your host, Ruth Sukup, and here we'll talk about everything from the science of weight loss to practical tips for making your health a priority in the midst of a busy life. It's a little bit nerdy, a little bit funny, and a little bit revolutionary. So buckle up, friend, because it's about to get real. Hey there, and welcome back to the Feel Better Live Free podcast. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Ruth Sukup, and I'm the founder of Thinlicious and the creator of the Thin Adapted System, as well as the New York Times bestselling author of seven books. And in this special bonus episode, we are taking a deep dive into what transforming your life through adopting the Thinlicious lifestyle actually looks like by sitting down to chat with one of our amazing clients and now TAS certified coach, Paulette Benson. Paulette joined our program about a year and a half ago and has so far lost an amazing 65 pounds. And in the process, not only improved her mindset, but skyrocketed her confidence. So much so that when we launched our certification program last year, she was one of the first to sign up. Like so many others, this program has changed her life. But honestly, it's always better to hear her talk about it in her own words. So here's what she had to say. Paulette, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. It's good to be here. It's good to be here. Don't be nervous. Okay. <laughs> so crazy. Paula told me she's a little nervous before we started. I, for some strange reason, you know, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all good. So let's just start like a little background. Tell us who you are, what you do, how you got involved in this world at all. Okay. So I am, how old am I anyway? No, I'm 53. <laughs> um, and I feel like, so I live in Utah. I have three kids. Um, my youngest is a senior in high school, just started school today. Aww. So everyone should cross their fingers that we can make it through this last year of high school. <laughs> You're almost um, an empty nester. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. I have uh, three grandkids. So, mm. and um, I so I started TAS two years ago, like, well, a year and a half ago, January, and I did the 28 day reset. Um, but I'm a healthcare professional. I'm a pharmacist by trade, and I've been working in a pharmacy since I was 16 years old and I've been doing all this stuff. And I was just looking for, I just, I, I've, I'm like everyone else. I've done every diet. I've tried everything. I've always just wanted to look better, feel better. There's always just been something. So I saw the 28 day reset and I'm like, oh, I can do this. I can do anything for 28 days. That's what I thought. Yeah. That's what I thought. I was like, I can do anything for 28 days. And I won't lie when I then looked into it and I was like, oh crap, what did I get myself into? (laughs) But then I still had that in my head. I'm like, I, I'm going to try this. I'm going to, I'm going to do it. And there was some major things that my mindset like I I feel like not only has this been a health journey but my mindset has been like the biggest thing that has changed because I would always just like oh this isn't gonna work or whatever or like my biggest thing I remember being on the Facebook thing and thinking myself how do I tell them that I can't give up pasta (laughs) 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 <laughs> <laughs> and, and I don't think that I have had pasta for like, a, I don't know, six months, a year. Like I'll have, when my family has it, I might have a bite or two now, but yeah. Yeah, I don't even miss it. It's the craziest thing. Isn't it so crazy? I think that's what's so cool. And obviously we don't call it the 28 day metabolism reset anymore. It's just phase one of our program. Right, right. That's what it is. And I feel like it's almost like 
you like, if you can get into that mindset of I can do anything for 28 days, you get through the 28 days and you're like, oh, like this is totally do I can actually do this forever. Like it's so, it's, it's so mind blowing how that, that changes. Yeah. And and that's kind of how I approached it. I was just like, I can do this for, and then it just was like, well, if I've did it for this long, I can keep going and I can do this. And I just really like looking back because I'm actually, I'm down 65 pounds. Wow. And I have been for like, I've been pretty much been with, you know, here and there, 10 pounds since December. Wow. So almost, you know, and so I was like, um, I can just keep doing this. And I just don't even like, I look back and I'm thinking about, okay, so what did I do? What did I do? You know? And I'm like, I just kept my head down and just kept it simple. And my biggest thing, I still track my food every day. You like, do. I, yeah. I think I, I'm a, I'm a geek. I'm a nerd, numbers <laughs> nerd, science nerd, you know? Yeah. But I think I'm like at 500 and something consecutive days of tracking. Wow. Like that's 580 amazing. something days because it's just something that it like makes me feel fulfilled and it makes me feel like I've actually accomplished something for the day. And so, but it also, I feel like it really helps me keep on track because like, even if I'm not on whatever on plan, or if I like mess up a little bit, I'm still tracking that like, Oh, I had an ice cream cone, you know, or whatever, but then it's way easier to see how that affects how I eat. Yeah. And probably just affects like how, how your body is able to handle it. Because at this point you're probably pretty metabolically flexible Yeah, and yeah. you can see that like, Oh, I'm actually okay to like go. Yeah. Like, it doesn't make a change huge... my macros. Yeah. It doesn't have yeah. a huge impact anymore, which yeah. I think, I mean, that's obviously the goal of our entire program and... is to get you to that point of metabolic flexibility. Yeah. And so then when you see that you're just like, it's light bulbs. It's like, Oh my gosh, this is so great because you do get to this point and then you're like, oh, and now I can go back to a little bit of this or a little bit of that. And, but I don't need yeah. to like, and, but you, you don't feel like you have to have it and you're not deprived by any, any reason. Right. Yeah. No, that's, I, I love that. And I love that you're talking about that. Cause I think that's so true. Like number one, there's so many things to pull out of there. Right. Number one, the fact that like you did diet after diet struggled would gain the weight back, right? Like all these things. And now here you are, you've maintained it for all this time. Like, and it's not even, it's not even hard. I think that's amazing that you still track every day. Like being, yeah. it sounds like you're pretty it's much phase just, three maintenance yeah, mode. Pretty much. Like, like I've, I've like thought, oh, I should probably maybe go back to phase two and be a little more strict with my macros for a little while. And, and I will for a minute and then, you know, and then it's, yeah. We're, it's summer. It's school starting. We actually are going hunting today. We're big hunters. And so we're off to the mountain today. And so I was like, okay, what am I taking to eat for all of it? You know, and yeah. so I have to make sure I've, I'm feeding four boys hunting today, oh, you know, this weekend. So of, that's a lot of food. That's a lot of food. <laughs> and, but they're, they're funny about it. Cause they're like, we're not eating your food. And I'm like, it's not my food. It's everyone's food. <laughs> really yeah that's yeah. funny I would think they would yeah. like it because it's so heavy oh, and they, meat and cheese they love and it they but do. they're like where they still want their carbs they still want the, oh, you know yeah but they're just like oh is the and you know I just laugh I'm like you can eat what I make or you can make your own I don't know you know <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome so like I mean what there was something else I was going to say in relation to what you were saying and it, it was in my head and now it's totally oh. gone <laughs> but how did you like how how did how did that whole transition go so you did the 28 day metabolism reset and then you're like I'm just gonna keep going and how long did it take you to lose the weight and are you uh, is so there it still was more so, that you want to lose now or you're just I, good, like I'm I good. think I would probably be like I keep thinking oh maybe another 15 pounds like Um, but then I'm like, oh, but I'm still good, but maybe another, you know, so it's just kind of one of those, like, uh, not so sure. Um, I really like, I was, I was thinking about it and especially, um, like going and doing all the coaching things and now being a health coach and dealing with my, my clients on the cohort. 
and thinking of the like my journey in comparison to where they're at and I'm like I really just kept it simple like when I was in like the throes of it it was just simple like I didn't really I mean I tried to do some movement in there but I didn't really focus on exercising at all I just and I kept my food pretty simple and so looking back on it I'm like I remember probably like November, December of last year going, oh, I'm like 50 pounds down. When did that happen? Wow. <laughs> so it just kind of took it, like took you it by just, surprise. Almost. Yeah. It was just kind of like yeah. became my normal every day. This is what I do. Yeah. And I was getting on the scale and I was doing the challenges and I was doing my pictures and I was, I mean, I was, and I knew things were ha happening, but it wasn't really like really real until like I hit that 50 pound mark and I'm like, what? <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. So, yeah. So now you're kind of, I can kind of relate to that point of being at, like, I've kind of, I've lost more than I thought I was going to, and I feel really good. This is easy to maintain. So do I want, like, do I want to just stay in maintenance? Like, it's hard to find the motivation to go, yeah, I'm really going to go into it and I'm going to yeah. get ripped and do all that. Like, you're like, I actually like, am, have already done way more than I thought I was going to do. So, but, yeah. but it's also okay to know that you, that's okay. Right. Like that you, that. Oh, definitely. Like, why, why? why make your life harder? And I, I think that's such a, like, it sounds like you're really going through that right now too, right? You got a lot of stuff going on with summer and kids going back to school and all the stuff like that. You can have seasons where I'm just going to maintain and I'm going to maintain the status quo and I'm going to keep it simple and easy. And then there might be other times where like all of a sudden you're like, okay, I feel like I could maybe push myself a little harder right now. Yeah. And I think that's such a great place to be too. Yeah. I think my biggest, like, I decided the first of the year that my, my word of the year is going to be strong. And that my whole thing was, is now that I've done this, now I'm going to work on like becoming stronger as far as like strength. Cause yes. yeah, it you, you do like, I feel like I turned 50 and like everything started falling apart, like immediately. Like I woke up at 50 and was like, okay, something happened. <laughs> <laughs> so, like I'm not as strong I can't see I can't you know and all these things and I'm like okay so now I want to work on like and I've done I, I I started walking I've been doing some Pilates and so just kind of like but I'm not gonna I I had to like really tell myself don't get overboard or stressed in it and I think that's another thing that a lot of people can get carried away with is like getting to a point where they're like okay now I'm gonna totally exercise and get strong. And then they like yes. throw all this cortisol into their system and then they, they derail themselves. Yeah. And you, and you burn out so quickly. And that was, I feel like that was like every diet I was ever on up until I discovered and created the TAS system that we use now. Right. Like that I would, I, cause I'm such a type A personality too. So I'm like, I'm going to track all the things and I'm going to cut my calories and I'm going to run every day and I'm going to do all this exercise and I'm going to drink all the water. And like, you like load yourself up with so many things that you can't, like you get overwhelmed and then it's like disastrous, right? Like within yeah. two weeks, you're like, I'm so exhausted. I can't even do this anymore. <laughs> and I, that's always like, that was always like part of my problem and why it was so hard to maintain. And I think that has been the hugest difference for me personally is just realizing like it, you like, you can go through seasons, you can stay kind of on track and give yourself time. But I, I see that in our program too. And you probably do too, as a coach, right? Like there are some people that come in and they're like, I want to do all the things and I want to do it all at once. And then there's other people like, and what we really try to encourage people is take it slow. We've got steps, like just do this first, just focus on this, then focus on this. Like you're, this is a long journey that you're in. You're yeah. in it for the long haul. You're in it for life. So there's no rush. There's no reason you have to do everything all at once. And it sounds like you've like embodied that so well. And look at where you are. Yeah. Like it's so five pounds so down and maintaining it. And it's, <laughs> it's amazing. The other thing is, is the difference. I think the thing that I am most grateful for is the mindset stuff. Like I have changed the, how I think about a lot of stuff and I'm more confident and I'm, I think I'm a nicer person actually. <laughs> it's so funny. I'm like, I think I have a better outlook on stuff. I, 
I really like I, you you retroflect a lot you know you're like okay and I'm like I think I was in a place like my, my raising kids doing all the things just in my job da, da, da. and I just don't think I took the time to prioritize myself ever and mm -hmm. learning that whole thing too is like it is okay to make yourself a priority it is okay to you know do all these things for you because guess what then it pays off everyone yes um, and it's it's been like that's probably the one thing that has been like so big for me is you know like getting all that pay it forward as what as whatever you know that i can that and then the whole thing is that i can do hard things like i knew i could do hard things before but now i look back and i'm like look how hard this was and i did it Yes. I love that. I love that. Can you like give any examples of like mindset shift of, I mean, that I'm putting you on the spot. So if you can't think of it, oh, you're fine. But um, like of where you were before and how you would approach something to how, like how you've noticed that you're different now. Um, probably one of the biggest things, like when I say like, I'm a nicer person. Yeah. So I have a stressful job. I work in a super busy pharmacy and it is like, go, 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 go. And I feel like I got stressed out way too much on a daily, like it, everything just got so, and then I would take it home and I'd walk in the door and my something would go and I would just like, rah, you know, and yes. now I feel like even in my job, like when things get stressful, I can say to myself, it's okay. You know what? the day will end and things will be fine and I can go yeah. home. Yeah. <laughs> and I can go home and I can walk in the door. And even if things are crazy, I can be like, okay, well we can get through this. And I can think that to myself. Whereas yeah. before I wasn't even like, I don't feel like I was capable of thinking that because I was just so, I wasn't even focused on thinking about that. I was in control of where my story was going. Oh, wow. And probably just so exhausted, right? Like exhausted, the reactive, the whole, yeah. yeah, the whole nine yards. And I'm like, and now I'm like, um, you know, I can, I have, I have control over the narrative now. Like I can yeah. decide where this is going to go. So. That's so huge. How, how has that been like being a pharmacist and yet being in our program? Cause we're pretty, <laughs> we're pretty anti-pharma. <laughs> Um, you know what? You I've haven't, been, if you haven't picked no, up on that. And, and, and I, um, okay. So my background too, though, I have always, always, always from day one, been a proponent of Eastern and Western medication. And I have got flack for that my whole career. Like, cause people are like, you know, oh, and I, and I always look back at it and go, okay, but we all need to take a step back and be like, okay. So I get, we need all this medicine, but where do you think all this started at? You know, we didn't just all of a sudden walk up on some manufacturing plant for some drug and be like, oh, ta-da. No, it came from, we called it in, in school, we called it weeds and seeds. Like, mm -hmm. you know, that's where it all came from. And so I feel like Eastern and Western should be able to shake hands and, and be complimentary to each other. And I've always felt that way. Um, I, I won't lie. Um, when I started learning more of this stuff, because I'm just like Dr. Edie says in the lessons, I'm pretty sure nutrition was not covered in pharmacy school. And no. I felt when I first learned about that, I was angry. I was mad and I felt betrayed. I yeah. felt betrayed by my own profession. And I still kind of do because I know it's not, it's that whole thing where it's driven by money and not by you know, I mean, there are, there are the, going to be those people and there are, there's a need for what I do, but yeah. a lot of it is driven by money and not by the best interests of people. Yeah. So yeah. I think for now I have, I can be a food advocate for my, my patients. Mm. I can be an educational advocate for my patients because yeah. I, I counsel patients every day. That's and amazing. And that's kind of where I'm looking at it for like, so what can I do now to just make things better for everyone? So, yeah, so. I love that. I love that. And it is, it, it is true. Like I would, I would think I would find that very 
difficult, right? Like to, to like see behind, like to pull back the curtain because this is yeah. kind of what you've done. Yeah. You it's kind of been curtain. that wizard of Oz moment. Yeah. Where, you know, all of a sudden the magic is like taken away and you're like, Oh my. Yeah. Goodness. And then you, and then you're seeing on a daily basis, like the pills and people just the drugs, the drugs, the drugs, 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 knowing what you know now, which is that food is medicine and eating the right things is going to help would is going to like have a lasting impact. And, oh, it was, that would, I would, I yeah. would really struggle with that. I can see where so, I would see why it, you get stressed yeah. out. And that's amazing that your mindset like, is like, so Zen now you're uh, like, but I got I think it this. Saved, I think that <laughs> saved me because I think I, I, cause for a while I was just like, how can I continue to do this? If that's kind of what I know now, but yeah. at the same time, it's like, I still have to, because, you know, this is money, you know, <laughs> money, this is what pays the bills. This is what right. sustains us. But so then I was like, okay, so how can I make it different? Well, this is how I can make it different. I can counsel on nutrition when I counsel on prescriptions too. That's I can awesome. say, Hey, you know, do you realize that if you concentrate on getting enough protein, that this, this, and this, and this might actually get better for you. So That's- um, that's amazing. Like what a gift then you are to your patients and to the people that are coming in. Like what, like that's what we need more of, right? Because for sure. Yeah. yeah. Of course we are so like on the one hand, glad to be living in a society where we do have access to medicine and, and all the things and research and all this stuff. But like, if it's, if we're just ignoring the number one problem, which is the standard American diet that most people are eating that's causing all these problems, then that's an issue too. Like, and so that's amazing. So kudos to you for that. Because oh, that's thanks. Crazy. Well, and I also think that a lot of people get caught up in, and even like you see it in like all the new people that come on all my cohort, like they just feel so defeated when they feel like they screwed it up. And mm-hmm. when people go and get labs done and they come to the pharmacy and they have like five new prescriptions and they're like, they, they feel so defeated. And so I'm like, well, I need to figure out a way where I can be the cheerleader for them. Like I am for my cohort, just be like, okay, well, there are still things that you can do to change. So, because I know that there's still things that I can do to change every day. Like I can change, you can change. We can, you know, it's, it's the mindset is huge. It's if we can embrace the fact that we can that we have the ability to change our story, that we can write any way we want it, that that is where, that's where all the wins are. Wow. That's so huge. Okay. So last kind of wrap up question, you are like, you're now a coach in our program and you are working with people, especially that they're just coming in and starting for the first time. What, how has that changed your perspective? Like what, what advice would you give somebody who's just like still feeling like I'm overwhelmed? I think I want to do this. I'm not sure if I want to do this. What do I like? What do I have to know? Like, what would you, if you could just like go back and tell somebody one thing, what would it be? Just to keep it simple, just one mm-hmm. thing at a time. Love and it. the whole like, um, give yourself grace. Like, if you mess up, tomorrow is a new day. Um, tomorrow is a new day. And just keep it simple because. I I have gone back. Like when I do have questions from my group and they're like, I'm doing all the things I'm, you know, and when they start saying I'm doing all the things, then I, I think about when I was doing all the things and I was like, I never felt like it was a chore. I never felt like I was doing all the things. I just kept it simple and kept it like real, like it was a day to day. Here we go tomorrow. You know, tomorrow's my next day. I'm just going to choose the best things I can. And I'm going to keep it simple. I love that. I love that. It's such a, that is such a key attitude because like you can always add more because as, as you get used to it, right? Like things start yeah. to really want something that felt hard two weeks ago. Now it's like, Oh, I don't, I don't even think about this anymore. Right. And so then that's right. when you add something else and, and, and you can, can there's no limit to the improvements that you can do. Like, as you just said, like there's no, and that's that the whole, that's the beauty of it because then you get to that place and then your mind will actually like tell you or like clue you in on, huh? I'm pretty sure that I could add in, you know, tracking my water every day to make sure that I'm getting my whatever, or I feel like I'm good to start throwing in some good, like 20 minute walks every day. And, and, you know, like 
oh, I could listen to my, you know, like you're, you just start to find things where you're like, because you get in an attitude of improving your life. Yeah. I love that. Paulette, thank you so much for sharing your story. This was so helpful and so inspiring and I'm so thrilled for you. Thank you. Don't you just love Paulette's story and her mindset shift? It's so good and so inspiring. And if she can do it, I promise that you can too. And that brings me to the end of this bonus episode, but I will be back with another new episode very soon.